There are very few creatures in the history of D&D that find themselves so frequently reprinted amongst different editions, but simultaneously very obscure to the level of today's monster. The Hue Cuva, which despite its name is not a very colorful version of whatever a Cuva is, saw its debut in AD&D, and then it was reprinted again in 2nd edition, and then it was reprinted three separate times in 3rd edition. Once in the 3.0 Monster Manual 2, and then a couple other times in Dragon Magazine. One of which even spelled the name differently, and I'm not sure if that was intentional or just an error that they decided to roll with because the magazine was already behind schedule. But whatever the case may be, this monster has popped up several different times, and I had never heard of it until one of our community members recommended that I cover it on our Discord channel. So welcome to Monster of the Week, the show where we dig up old creatures from past editions of D&D and bring them to light to use in your current 5th edition D&D campaign. Today we're going to go over just exactly what a Hue Cuva is, what it can do in combat, and of course some ways that you can actually employ it in your game with some plot hooks and that kind of thing. But first things first, what even is a Hue Cuva and why does it have such a weird name? So the Hue Cuva is essentially the clerical companion monster to the bone Bonesinger, which I covered back in October. The Bonesinger, of course, being an undead bard, the Hugh Cuva is an undead and twisted take on a cleric. What I like about this monster is that they're not extremely nasty on their own, but when paired up with a few other basic undead, like just a group of skeletons, they can become so dangerous. So if you have any clerics in your game that are straying from the path and might end up cursed by their god to become a Hugh Cuva upon death, tell them to do the rest of your party a favor and get back on the straight and narrow. So first things first, we need to understand why we should be afraid of these guys and what they can actually do. So let's talk about some. So as far as straight up combat goes, like I said, these guys are not the most threatening in the world. As former clerics, they of course have access to some magic. They can cast spells up to level 3 from the cleric spell list, which of course means that they're going to have a lot of healing spells and spells that are kind of meant to support the group, like Bless. But of course, in terms of straight up damaging spells, they do have some options, probably the most dangerous of which being Spirit Guardians. But that said, one of the things that's really cool about this monster is because clerics don't just know their spells, they have to prepare them every day. If you have one of these monsters in your game and you want them to fulfill a certain purpose, you can give them whatever cleric spells you want, really. As long as they're level 3 or less and they're on the cleric spell list, anything is fair game. And of course, they have their signature Morning Star, probably the one they were buried with, which they don't really want to use, but if push comes to shove, they can whack someone on the head with that. Where they start to get a bit more dangerous, though, and where they actually earn that challenge rating of 6, is when it comes to their twisted clerical abilities. Instead of being able to turn undead, they have an ability called Empower Undead, which does exactly what it sounds like. They can basically create an aura around them 30 feet, and all undead that are within that 30 feet have advantage on attack rolls and on saving throws against magical effects. So in a situation where you have five or six skeletal archers within that radius, they go from being a mild nuisance to a pretty significant threat, because each one of those bow attacks they make is going to be twice as likely to hit and have two chances to get a critical. Now at lower levels, that can be very scary. Just ask anyone who's played a necromancer before. But as the legions of undead which they are bolstering whittle down their opponents, your party, something that they can do as well which is very unkind is an ability called sap life. And I guess this isn't really something that they have to do, it's one of their traits. Basically the way this works is whenever a creature regains hit points from any means, whether it's a spell or a fighter in your group using second wind, the amount of hit points they recover is cut in half. This is essentially meant to represent this creature literally drawing away that healing energy and twisting it to its own magical ends. So it can be very difficult to stay on top of the mountain of arrows that's coming your way when your healing is all diminished. And when you couple that with a swarm of spirit guardians and a wall of zombies and skeletons in front of this thing, it can get pretty dangerous. But with all that said, the most fascinating thing about this creature, of course, is its origins. I mean, a cleric that defied its god and ended up cursed to become a Hugh Cuva upon death. There's definitely a lot of room to play with in terms of story in that area. So let's talk about some. So picture this, the party's first adventure is they have to take down some type of cleric who was under the guise of being a cleric of good and law or 
whatever the case may be. And that cleric has now turned on its people and turned on the clergy and is actually manipulating the populace to its own critical and evil ends. That's a pretty classic beginning to a campaign. Just an NPC who's supposed to be a good guy, but ends up being a bad guy and the party has to take them down. But imagine that that cleric who turned on all their vows and their way of life and everything that they were supposed to be doing for their god then comes back to life as a Hugh Cuva. This abomination and twisted version of what it once was. So maybe this enemy that the party took down towards the beginning of the campaign comes back as a recurring boss, except now it's this evil undead thing and it has all these skeletal minions. And of course it has a reason to hate the party because they're the ones who killed it. Maybe it even returns to wreak vengeance on the town and the players come back and find that the town is abandoned or destroyed or they're at war with this group of undead that is being controlled by the Hugh Cuva and they have to go back and truly finish what they started. Or maybe that cleric was actually connected to some type of necromancer or other greater undead, and when it died, that being brought it back to life to continue its service. Whatever way you spin that, there's definitely a lot of potential there to use this as kind of a recurring villain because it is an undead thing. And it's not just a regular undead thing, it's a smart undead thing, and those are the scariest kind of undead. Or perhaps this undead abomination has actually infiltrated a church and it just wears lots of robes and maybe a mask so no one can see its true face and no one knows its undead nature. If it were to set itself up in a position like that, it could be trying to destroy the church of some good aligned deity from the inside out and no one's even really aware of it. Maybe selling promises of resurrection and bringing loved ones back to life, but of course, they come back in a way not really exactly how people want them to. Or if you want to go a less sinister route, maybe the Hugh Cuva is actually seeking redemption. It could be in life that it did defy its god, or that it did do something evil and wrong, but now in undeath, it's actually seeking redemption. Of course, no one's going to trust a misshapen skeletal ex-evil cleric, but maybe it approaches the party and seeks out their help in achieving some kind of mission that will hopefully grant its soul solace, perhaps restoring an ancient temple that it once desecrated, or maybe putting to rest some type of undead abomination that the Hukuva had a hand in making when it was alive. You could use it as an NPC quest giver that also goes along with the party to attempt to reconcile whatever misdeeds it has done. And who knows, maybe if they are successful, the god that was originally defied by this Hugh Cuva in life might grant the party some kind of boon or special magic item for helping out one of its lost followers. But whichever way you choose to use this creature, it is very thematic and very interesting. I mean, you could even kind of put together an undead adventuring party where you have a Hugh Cuva that was the cleric and you have a bone singer that was the bard and maybe a death knight that was the paladin and kind of just put together this reflection of your current adventuring party, but they're all undead and misshapen in some way. I think that would be a really cool encounter actually for a big boss layer. But in any case, I'm sure you guys have tons of plot hooks and ideas as well. And if you do, please leave a comment and tell me about them or talk about it in the Discord with the other members of our community and myself. And if you have a monster that you'd like to see show up on Monster of the Week, please let me know about it. You can do so on Twitter or in the aforementioned Discord or again in the comments here. And as always, if you do want to use this monster in your game, there is a stat block in the description below. Or if you're one of my awesome patrons, you can find the monster manual style stat block linked on the Patreon page. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it and I will see you in the next video. Until then.